A PhD is unlike anything you've likely ever done before. And contrary to popular belief, a PhD is not the top of the student food chain as much as it is the lowly bottom rung of your career as a researcher. You're crossing the threshold into the realm of academia. It sounds like a magical place, doesn't it? One with tenure track jobs for everybody. Where was I? Anyway, the tools, the frameworks, the processes that you've become used to throughout your education up until now probably won't feature as much in a PhD. And in today's video, I want to explore the top 10 things that I wish I had known as a first year PhD researcher. But first, if you're new to the channel, hey, hello, how's it going? My name is Holly. I am a third year, oh my God. I am a third year PhD student in the humanities. I'm Irish, but I'm based in New York. And on this channel, we love a little bit of academic lifestyle, a little bit of navigating our thirties because that's also terrifying. I also host live study with me sessions a couple of times a week and from time to time I also make content about my experiences as a stage 4 cancer patient. But as I've already said, today's video is advice I would give to my former first year self as a PhD student, so without any further chit chat, let's dive into them. Piece of advice number one, you are now a researcher first and a student second. So you need to get ready for that shift in your identity. As I mentioned in the introduction to this video, a lot of what you have gotten used to during your higher level education up to this point might not necessarily feature on a day-to-day -day basis anymore now that you're starting a PhD. For example, if you recently completed a master's. Yes, you had a thesis to complete perhaps, but you probably had a number of modules to partake in as well. At the end of your term or at the end of your year, you would have sat a couple of exams perhaps alongside that thesis. In a PhD program, there is only one exam. Um, there's only one paper that you write and it is the paper. So the sooner you have that mental shift about who you are now, the more prepared you will be for the type of work you will be engaging when engaging when engaging with in the very near future piece of advice number 2 you are every person on your team i think this is especially true of humanity students i think or perhaps any phd student who doesn't work in a lab or in a team environment on a day-to-day -day basis you are the director you're the manager you're the assistant and you're the intern running around getting everybody coffees key job don't underestimate it. You do everything, everything. Of course, in those early weeks and months, you take advice and guidance from your supervisor and from those in your academic circle. But as the months and the years progress into your PhD, eventually the expert in the room when it comes to your topic is you. And that's so exciting. But I suppose related to the piece of advice number one about your identity as a researcher, as soon as you can take ownership of the fact that you are steering your ship, I think the more liberated you will be as a researcher. And speaking of having to do everything all at once, it is therefore crucial that you have a system in place that allows you to craft your research process. So tip Number three is to find a system that works for you in allowing you to do the writing, make notes on the reading, plan months, perhaps years in advance. And if you're doing teaching on the side, all of the lecture prep that goes into teaching a module as well. And as much as I love pen and paper, kind of like comparing, hold on, what's his name? Alexa, what's the name of Captain America? Captain America's real name is Steven Steve Rogers. Yeah. It's like comparing Steve Rogers to Captain America. One is puny and adorable, and the other one is powerful and very, very sexy. I mean, useful. Even if you like to handwrite your notes, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here and state that you simply will not be able to manage all of the reading and the writing that you're going to need to do via paperwork alone. So the sooner you pick a digital information and management system for you to take care of all that stuff, again, the easier your life is going to be. It doesn't actually matter which one you use. What matters most is one, do you find it easy to use? And two, is the information that I'm storing in this piece of software safe and secure? This will depend on your field. It'll depend on your research area. So perhaps engage with your immediate academic circle, your fellow PhD students in your department to see what they have been using so far in their research. Which neatly brings me along to point number four. Your community of fellow PhD students is an extremely powerful asset in your back pocket. I've said it before on my channel that often the most useful advice comes not 
just from the experts in the room. And of course their advice is valuable and valid. But you also wanna check out what other PhD students have to say. Those who are on the exact same journey as you, but just one or two steps ahead because they've just gone through what you're about to go through and are perhaps uh, in a better position to advise you on any areas that you're struggling with. So find your tribe and find it as soon as possible and keep finding it, you know, engage with the people on campus, engage with the students who also work with your supervisor. Uh, try and find a community online if that's your vibe, as was my vibe, as was everybody's vibe back in 2020. There wasn't much face-to-face -face stuff going on in those good old days. Piece of advice number five. The imposter syndrome is rampant and there's very little you can do about it other than just ignore it. Acknowledge it, recognize that it's making you feel shitty, you're a little bit overwhelmed, but actually the biggest thing that has helped me combat imposter syndrome is just getting stuck into work because the imposter syndrome will go away as soon as you start to feel like you know what you're doing and that only happens with time and with diligent consistent work every single day so i'm sorry i don't have a magic piece of advice for that but just take comfort in the fact that we're all there with you and um, it never fully goes away but it does get easier to bear <laughs> why do i make it sound like it's a disease maybe it is a disease one thing also actually that really helped me with the imposter syndrome was partaking in workshops that were being offered by my university in my first year as a PhD student. Now granted it was literally the only thing I could do because of lockdown and COVID and not being able to leave the house so they were also like my only social outlet but going to talks where people who are good at writing told me how to be good at writing or how to get better at writing did also slightly ease the imposter syndrome at times so that is something you can do as well and speaking of writing we've got tip number i'm sorry i'm reading off my ipad and i'm so bad with numbers musician not a mathematician piece of advice number six writing is something that i wish that i had been doing way back in first year I talk about uh, writing in a lot more detail in this video that I've put above um, and I talk about what you should be writing when you're making notes in that video in a bit more detail so I'll only touch on it very briefly here but basically no bullet points you're not gonna write your PhD in bullet points so get rid of those bullet points ASAP and you really want to try and write everything in your own words I know you've probably heard that advice before but it has to be reiterated because it's so simple write in your own words Try and have an opinion on your literature and don't write not in full sentences. Don't write in bullet point, write in full sentences. You know what I mean? Yeah. Try and write a little bit every day. And when you write, write with a little bit more authority than perhaps you're used to. No one else has to see it. Not right now, at least. The skill of critical thinking will be imperative, intrinsic, I don't know, to the writing process. You're not just copying and pasting quotes from one document to another. When it comes to critical thinking, you're not criticizing what you read or or who you're reading. Like you're not you're not being super harsh on what somebody did two years ago. Ew, David. Basically means you're ha you have an opinion on it. I could do a full video on critical thinking. It's such a big topic and it's so important to PhD research that if that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can whip something up on that. But one thing I did early on was to keep a research journal. And this is not so much a piece of advice for my former self as more of a kind of virtual high five to my former first year PhD self because it was the process of keeping a daily log as a researcher that helped me one, get into a flow of work. I would do this by simply writing down what I did today at the end of the day and make, you know, a very simple plan for what to do the next day but it also as the weeks and months passed became a way for me to track my project progress and to see the growth that I was making in my project so if you find it hard to get into a workflow in those first few months you're still trying to figure out what to do try not to be so concerned with what to do and just doing something and keeping track of what you're doing and see how that leads you closer to where you need to go just be gentle with yourself in those first few weeks and months and a daily journal will allow you to feel some semblance of control and progress as you navigate those early days of your first year PhD experience. There's so much noise in the city and I'm so sweaty because I turned the aircon off. Okay, got two more tips people, nearly there. Are you doing okay? Do you wanna smash that like button? Jokes, not really, but tip number nine. PhD students will experience seasons of work. You simply cannot work at 80 plus percent capacity all of the time. You are going to experience highs and lows during the year. 
Oh my god, person trying to connect and, 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 and make memories online here. New tab, just while we're waiting. I live in a part of New York that is called Hospital Row. So New York traffic, in particular, the ambulances in New York traffic are the main character in my life most days. When you are experiencing those not productive months, don't panic. Nobody can work at full capacity or at full throttle 100% of the time. It is inevitable that you, in any field or in any job, will experience a little bit of burnout, you'll just be tired, you'll perhaps be a little bit jaded and that's fine, that's normal. What you need to do in those moments is not try to force the work but to firstly lower your expectations for yourself and for what you think you can get done in a day. Sometimes all you need to do is just take a break. It is imperative that you prioritize your mental and your physical health during those low periods. And thankfully, discussions around mental health are improving, obviously not just on a societal level, but also within those smaller research communities in universities as well. So don't think that anybody will be shocked if you need to request a week off or, you know, just need to take a step back for a day or two. You're entitled to do so and it is the best thing probably for you. Which brings me to my very last piece of advice. You are doing a PhD, you are not your PhD. And I think if you can make that distinction early on and really feel that and sit with it and recognize it, you will feel less, less pressured because it won't be this reflection of you. You have an identity and a life outside of your PhD, so don't neglect that. Make sure that you nurture it as much as you can, even when things are a bit hectic and chaotic, because it's those things that in those busy times will fill your cup seeing your friends, spending time with family, loved ones, doggos, puppies, whatever. Hobbies don't hurt either and also a good night's sleep. So yeah, don't let your whole identity become wrapped up in your PhD. It is a surefire way to head into stormy waters. There are ups and downs to the PhD, but I have to say on a personal level, I have loved nearly every minute of it so far. I'm very lucky that I really like my project, that I have a superb supervisory panel and no matter how challenging it is, I love to learn um, and that at the end of the day is what I'm doing. I'm trying to learn something new and hopefully contribute something to my academic community. If you're new to this corner of the internet and you joined this video, please consider giving the like button a boop and also the subscribe button because we're quite nice over here. We make, we make very wholesome content and we'd like to have you be my friend. No, that's a book coming on a bit too strong there, Holly. Boop the like button or subscribe, I don't, I don't care. Anyway, until I see you in the next one, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be kind to yourself and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.